Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Uh, this week we're on the road traveling and putting parks on the air, so I thought in my absence I would share with you a video that Dave White and I recorded earlier this spring. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community. And today, uh, Dave, KZ9V, stopped by the shack to mm -hmm. share with us uh, some of the projects he's been working on. So, Dave, what did you bring for us today? Well, I, I uh, brought along a remote control for the Yesu FT891. Okay. And it's the same radio that we used when we did our uh, Minnesota QSO party. Yeah. And, and we actually implemented the macros, the uh, the message recordings that the 891 is capable of the, doing. The voice memory keyer that's built yeah. into this transceiver. Yeah, because w for that day-long contest, your voice would be just shot. Yeah. So, oh, you yeah. so you push a button and it plays whatever the message was. And then what we used in Minnesota was the CQ. Mm -hmm. So it was CQ, 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 Minnesota QSO party from K0M. K0M. I think, right? yep. Yeah. Well, that's pretty sweet, but Anybody that owns an FT891 realizes that the menus are a little awkward. If Yeah, if you really want to exploit that keyer, you only got three programmable buttons on the front of your faceplate. Exactly. And it makes it difficult. Yeah. Well, you know, Yesu's made a product to help you on that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the um, FH2 uh, remote control. It's this this little little yeah. gizmo here. Yeah. Um, I got I got one of these for my uh, FT3000, FT3, DX3000. Right. Uh, but I never used this in the field. I always it always feels a little bit a little bit on the on the flimsy side. Yeah, it, it doesn't weigh much. Mm -hmm. it, it's convenient. I guess it fits in your hand pretty nicely like that. But for guys that didn't get one with their radio, yeah. like you. Mine came with the radio. I yeah. had I had to buy the chip to actually make it work. But oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's another story. <laughs> yeah. But but this from Yesu uh, is about $100. Yep. Okay. And, you know, hams tend to be thrifty. I call it frugal. Yeah. But <laughs> some, people right. call, some people call it cheap. cheap. But that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, no hundred dollars. We'll put that over there. Michael has the hundred dollar one. Yeah. I went to the shop, got out uh, screwdrivers and pliers, and played my usual MacGyver trick. Mm -hmm. And so, so here's what I wound up with. Okay. This is my do-it-yourself FH2. And. Uh, I only have five buttons on there as opposed to the real FH2 that has yep. like like about 12 buttons on it. Yeah. But all I really was concerned about was being able to trigger the five memories. Yep. So if you're in a single sideband mode, it'll trigger five voice recordings if you have them in the radio. Correct. And when you switch modes to CW, it will trigger up to five uh, sequences of dots and dashes. Mm -hmm. And it does it flawlessly time over time after time after time after time. So it's really cool. Well, <clears throat> what I did was I went shopping on DigiKey and online. And for what is, I'm going to estimate about 12 maybe $13, I have what I think is a superior version of the FH2. <laughs> it's definitely more colorful. <laughs> yeah. It's it kind of a, it looks like M and M's. Is, yeah, I should probably call it my M and M remote. There you go. Yeah, but but what I did was I got a, a little plastic box. It's about uh, I don't know what do you think, Michael? Maybe an inch and a half deep, about four inches wide, yep. and probably about an inch and a half inch tall. It easily fits in your hand, sort of like an FH two, so I could operate it like this, or you could set it flat on the on a surface and, and push the buttons like that and make it do its thing it does its thing and it's it, it's pretty rugged i you know it's probably more durable than the hundred dollar uh yesu version i definitely wouldn't feel so bad if it broke out in the field um than i, right. than I would the fh2 yeah now <clears throat> we're going to take the back off of this thing and show you the insides so this little plastic box i found in my junk drawer the, the colorful buttons on the front I bought on uh, eBay. I can't remember the name of the manufacturer, uh, but they were pretty cheap, like $6 or so. Uh, when I did my shopping, 
I bought my components from Digicat. I bought uh, one eighth watt sized resistors. That was, uh, if I had it to do over again, I'd get a little bit bigger resistors. <laughs> but interestingly, the components inside of the ASU remote control are not very complex. What it is, is it's a series of resistors. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll show you the diagram uh, in the video here, but it's a, it's a bunch of precision valued resistors that the radio uses to detect which which uh, recording they want to play. So, so uh, basically all the all the transceiver is doing is it's measuring the impedance on this remote plug right. and as the impedance changes when you push the button that triggers the transceiver to play the particular yeah, message. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly simple. I thought it was some kind of encoded uh, digital <laughs> message or some serial <laughs> message. But no, so for instance, the, the number one, if I remember right, it's like 870 ohms or something like that, okay? So whatever combination of resistors you piece together, you get 870 ohms because it's open circuit until you push a button. Yeah. You push a button, you push button number one, 870 ohms goes down the, the little cable. And the radio says, ah, he wants number one. Bang, there you go. And so each of the five is a different value resistor, and you can see that on the graphic in the in the video but it's uh it's, it's really simple uh if you can solder resistors together you can do this and this is pretty much you didn't even breadboard this it, they're just yeah they're they're just sticking up there and um so right so if you go online you'll see some uh, do-it-yourself guys that have built similar boxes and some of them actually make a printed circuit board sure and so you can make it as fancy or uh, complex a, as you want to. Um, and, you know, and I'm not bragging about the solder job on any of the, these, <laughs> these resistors, but I can guarantee you that it does work and we're gonna show you that. Yeah, so, well, let's let's see how it works. So I'll hand this to you. All right. And we'll just I'll connect this to the remote jack on the back of my FT891. Yeah, he's got it done. plugged in. I got it plugged in. Yeah, so, so what I want to show you before I start pushing buttons on the remote, I want to show you why the remote is so helpful. Okay, so with the 891, Michael has already set it up so that the C button on the main screen will trigger memory number one. So that's that's for his convenience. And if you reach over and push that, it's cool. I'll, I'll push it here. CQ, CQ, Park Sunny Air, CQ, Park Sunny Air, KB9, VBR, Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo, calling CQ for Park Sunny Air. Okay, that's that's great. It's, and uh, so he's taking a drink of coffee yep. while, while that's playing, and mm -hmm. it's really a, a super convenient uh, feature in the radio. But there's only three buttons here, and he has only dedicated one of those three. To the voice key. To the voice key. Yeah. Okay, there's five, actually five messages, and you might want at any given time. So here's how Yesu uh, does that. We have to switch to a different submenu. We get over to the uh, memory key or submenu. Yep. And I got a video on how to use the memory key or so I'll throw a link of that in the video description if you want to learn how to use the memory key or in your FT891. Yep. And so from, from this screen, we can access any of the five memories, but it's not terribly simple. You have to reach this little button and, and select the w one you want. And in the heat of the battle in a contest or or the parks on the air activation mm -hmm. or whatever, you don't want to be fiddling with this button. Because now you can't see any of the other display. The rest of the display is is yep. taken up by this menu. So yeah. And you'd have to leave this menu up all the time. All the time. You know, it's, it's a pain. So so if I push the button right now, it'll play. CQ, CQ, Park Sunny Air, CQ, Park Sunny Air. KB9, VBR, Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo, calling CQ for Park Sunny Air. Yep, and if you, and if you want to play a different one, uh, I know he's got one on channel two, so I'll play this one. Thank you for the 5-9, you're 5-9 Wisconsin. Okay, and, and so it's doable, yeah. but it's a pain. You know, in an activation, you're sitting there, you got a log, you got your pencil, you got, you know, everything that's going on. It's just not very handy. And so that's why Yesu, you know, developed this product. Yep. 
So we've got mine plugged in now. Yep, yours is plugged in. So if I push the number one button, it should automatically trigger. It should play that CQ mess only. CQ, CQ, Park Sunny Air, CQ, Park Sunny Air, KB9, VBR, Kilo, Bravo Niner, Victor, Bravo Romeo, calling CQ for Park Sunny Air. Yeah, so you could have this in your lap or in your hand or sitting over on the table and, and you don't have to reach over to the radio mm -hmm. every time you want to trigger one of those. And we'll just we'll just show that the, uh, the 891 is capable of doing the CW messages too. So let me just change modes here quick. Oh, press and hold. Yeah, nothing is ever quick with an 891. There we go. There we go. And then spin the dial to CW. There we go. It's happy now. And then if we press number one. Yeah, now, and we can do it on the radio again because he has it programmed in yep. C. So I'll just do that just to show it. And there you see it's, it's a CW, uh, and he's calling CQ. So as soon as that gets done, I'll push the green button and it will just demonstrate that we can do it remotely too. Boy, that CW is pretty slow. Is that you, Mike? <laughs> <coughs> I yeah. think we just only send it as fast as we want to be able to receive it. Yeah, so. and it is adjustable <laughs> with, with, with the radio. Okay, so uh, maybe I'll push number two. Was it? Or I don't think two? we don't have anything set for two, so oh, you're okay. going to have to press radio. one again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there we go, the green button. But that, but you brought up a point, is if we were using this for CW, and which is that's primarily the reason why you built this, mm -hmm. is you could have your exchange as number two, yeah. and then your seven three. Uh, QRZ as number three. Exactly. And, and that's what I do. Um, it, CW can be a little intense. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it, it, it takes your mind, your hand, you get really focused, and you're trying to log, get copy of the calls. For guys that aren't really great CW operators, which I, <laughs> I'm certainly not, but it makes it so much easier because I can copy his call sign. Yep. And, and I'm doing that. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. And then I can send his call sign back to him with yep. the key so he knows I'm, I got the right guy. And then I push, push one of these buttons and it gives him his signal report or it says, uh, thank you, 73. Uh, you know, I have, I have the whole sequence, basically the whole exchange. Yeah. Back and forth, back and forth. Everything except his call sign is the push of a button. So while I'm sending perfect code yep. because it's all pre-recorded. <laughs> The perfect code is going out, and I'm sitting here logging or, you know, do it electronically. Yep. I'm, I'm taking I'm a sip of coffee. coffee. Uh, this, is, this is the relaxed CW. It is so much easier, and it sounds better on the other end because my code is perfect. Yeah. So all you're really concentrating on is the call sign, and that frees up all of that, that other work so you can do the um, administrative tasks of mm -hmm. logging and Right. getting ready for the next QSO. Yeah. So that's yeah, and it takes a lot of the stress out of it. Uh, when we were on our activation at Black River Falls, yeah. you saw me uh, operating and we were carrying on a conversation yep. while I was in the midst of QSOs. Hitting, which, hitting buttons, yeah. yeah. And you couldn't do that without <laughs> the built-in recording. Yeah, yeah. It, it's fun. It actually makes it makes CW fun for yeah. me. That's that's great. And it's it's a fun little it's a simple project, so it's something you can do in an afternoon or an evening. Um, and um, you know, hundred dollars, fifteen dollars, so it's um and it's a, it's a good learning experience. So yeah. thanks. Now the, now the one tip I would have, mm -hmm. uh, if you've never carved on a plastic box before, yeah. There's a there's a drill bit called a step drill. Step bit. Yep. And I, and I thought I saw one back here on, on Michael's shelf, but but always use the step bit because it it prevents it from wandering and it gets you the mm -hmm. exact precise yep. size hole that you want in in the box without uh, any uh, chance of error or mistakes. That's a wonderful little tool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, well, um, what we'll do is we'll put a. a project list of everything you need mm -hmm. and some links down in the video description if you want to build one of these boxes yourself and um, yeah and the schematic and with the, schema the, the, the schematic shows the resistor the values. resistor resistor and, values uh, yeah and every one of them is a combination of resistors because uh, you can't 
you, I don't think any of them were a common value of resistor. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I think they're all like two resistors in the series. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So great, great. Yeah. Well, Dave, thanks for bringing your... Um, your uh, remote control box uh, to the shack today to show us off, show it off and, and tell us how it how it works. Uh, greatly appreciated. So, uh, I'm Michael, KB9VBR. And I'm Dave, KZ9V. Have a great day in 7.3.